Good morning. I hope you're enjoying your break. I'm glad to see that at least some of you remembered to do this assignment over break. For this lesson, what we're going to do is have a really brief PowerPoint discussion, and then we're going to do a little virtual lab. After this lesson is complete, I expect that you'll be able to do your own lab, and then fill out a little worksheet that I have attached to it. So without further ado, let's get started. As you can see from the title slide, today's discussion is about model organisms. I want you to go ahead and pause for a little bit and try and think of what a model organism is. Go ahead, I'll still be here when you get back. Great, now that everyone has had a chance to think about this, let's see if your ideas are correct. So what is a model organism? The simple answer is that it is an organism that has been studied extensively. The reason why this organism is studied so much is a couple different reasons. The first being that it can thrive in a lab setting. Another thing to note is that they tend to have a really quick life cycle, meaning they go from adult to reproduction to baby to adult in a fairly quick manner. <clears throat> As a result of these things, we know a great deal of information on these organisms, which in turn makes them great for experiments like what we are about to do today. Now I want you to pause for a little bit and take a few seconds to brainstorm ideas on potential model organisms. Go ahead and pause the video again if you need to, and then we'll resume in just a second. Done? Okay, so while this is not an exhaustive list, some common monoorganisms that you might find in a lab are bacteria like E. coli. These are really great for studying simply because they only take about 30 minutes to reproduce. That's incredibly quick when you're considering there's thousands of them on a single plate. Next would be yeast. It's really similar to bacteria. It has a really quick generation time and it also grows in lab conditions really well. Another really common one in the field of botany would be Thalecress. Once again, it has a short generation time in terms of plants, about six weeks, which makes it a lot easier to study than, say, a tree. Another common one would be a zebrafish. These are really easy to maintain in a lab, which makes them great model organisms. And finally, we have fruit flies, also known as Drosophila. These are great model organisms, as they only have a reproductive cycle that lasts about 12 days, meaning they go from larva to adult fly in less than two weeks. Makes it really handy for studying in the lab. In addition to this, they're multicellular, and they produce hundreds of offspring at a time. So it makes it really handy for genetic research, which is what we'll be doing today. So without further delay, we'll go ahead and start the lab. The very first thing you'll want to do is open up CSG Lab on your computer. I'll have a link to it underneath the video, so just go ahead and click on that when you're ready. Now you're going to want to scroll down to that number one right here and click it. From this screen you have a couple different options. You can choose to create your own Drosophila population. However, that's something we're going to be doing later on the, in the unit. So for right now, I want you to just go ahead and click study a pa uh, practice problem. And for today, I'm going to show you practice population one as a demonstration. However, when you do this lab on your own, you're going to want to use practice population two. So when you go to do this, I want you to just go ahead and select the population you're supposed to. Click continue. And as you see, it brings up a window with 100 different flies. What's really nice about this program is that you can sort it in a couple different ways that would really be tedious in a lab setting. So you could say sort it by gender, you could sort it by body type, and then you have another way to sort it over here as well. So if you wanted to sort it by both, you have that option. Whichever way you want to do it, go ahead and do it that way, whichever way makes it more simple for you. Another really nice feature in this program is the Analysis tab. 
which can save you from having to do a lot of counting. If you look, it gives you wild type population, 100 flies. So that's what we started with. And then it tells you the female totals and the male totals. So for this particular trait, there was 47 female and 32 males for a total of 79. Whereas the wild type, there was just 7 females and 14 for a total of 21. This actually saves you quite a bit of counting, as I said just a little bit ago. Because otherwise in the lab, you would have to count every single one of these. And counting flies can actually be pretty difficult. So for the experiment that you'll be doing, what I want you to do is go ahead and select two flies. It doesn't matter what their phenotype is. As you can see, I'm working with genotypes with your selection with population two. It's listed in terms of phenotype. Once you've decided which flies you want, you'll go ahead and cross them. So I'll say choose this big A, big A from the female section and this big A little A from the male section. Choose your flies and you can click cross and now you have a new vial. So this vial has 68 flies. This is all the offspring that your original two flies produced. From here you're going to want to make some observations about your vial. So a great way to do this like I mentioned before is that analysis tab. If you remember I chose a big A, big A for one parent and then a big A little a for the other parent. So what I mean what that means is I chose a homozygous dominant and I also chose a heterozygous parent. Since that homozygous dominant is there, you would expect all your offspring to be the dominant phenotype, which in this case is the wild type. And if we look at our results, that's what we see we see that we have 29 females and 39 males. You're going to do a similar sort of analysis of your own experiment. If you want to view this a different way, you could go ahead and go back to that organisms tab and sort it in a slightly different way so that you can actually visualize it better. If you notice, not all of my organisms have the same exact genotype, even though they have the same phenotype. If you wanted to, you could try mixing different types of parents to see if you come up with similar or different results. You don't have to do that for this particular lab, but that is something we're going to explore as we get farther into the unit. So now that you've seen this little example, you can go ahead and try this lab on your own once you're done with it. You'll want to go ahead and complete that handout that's attached to the bottom of the video. And the purpose of today's lab was to introduce you to this program. As I mentioned, we're going to use it further as we get deeper into this unit of study. So it's good to become familiar with it before we really get into this stuff.